College students from North Dakota recently got to showcase their ingenuity and creativity as they tested their new handcraft spacesuit design. Five schools took part in the program, each developing a specific piece of the suit. The pieces were then assembled and tested in North Dakota's rugged badlands, where the terrain appears to be quite similar to that of Mars. Pablo de Leon, an aerospace engineer and former spacesuit designer, led the project, and he joins me now from the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks. So, Pablo, how do you engineer a spacesuit then to cope with life on Mars? Well, basically, uh, a planetary suit is very different than the zero-G suit, for example, the, the ones that are used in the space shuttle or in the International Space Station. Uh, for a planetary um, space suit, you have to fight with the gravity and with the, with the dust that, as we know now, uh, on Mars is, uh, is a very fine in the powder, so you have to create uh, a suit that have to cope with all these uh, challenges and uh, provide to the suit uh, mobility elements so the astronaut will be able to walk and to move uh, on Mars on an extended and a long duration um, uh, flight. So how have you coped with the dust? Well, uh, actually what we need was to try to create a, 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 a very impervious suit with the use of an outer garment that can be uh, done and off uh, outside of the habitat. And also we are planning for the future to, to have some like, um, like uh, showers of, uh, of um, compressed air or uh, compressed CO2 that can clean the suit before you enter into the airlock because what you don't want is to have the airlock, uh, the, the habitat where you are living totally contaminated. Now, temperature is obviously going to be an issue as well, Pablo, on Mars. How does your suit stand up to that? Well, the temperature on, on, on Mars are very, very uh, low. Uh, what we did here is because the problem is you have to create a compromise because you are testing a spacesuit that is designed to be on Mars, but you are you're testing it here on Earth. So you have to be careful with the, with the material selection. The temperatures on Mars, on Mars are, are very low. It, it can run from minus 150 centigrades in, uh, in, um, during the, the, the equatorial uh, area of Mars during the winter, so are very cold temperatures. Um, so it's, it's, it's going to be a challenge. Now what we, what we have now is, is just a constant demonstrator and a prototype. There is a long way to go from here to uh, an actual suit that you can walk on Mars. But we address most of the problems related with thermal control in the design. And uh, we will continue doing testing uh, here in the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks. And uh, we plan to put the suit under lower and lower temperatures. Uh, and as uh, you may know that Grand Forks is, is very cold and during the winter, so probably we'll have minus 50 centigrades uh, um, next uh, winter, and we are going to test the suit under those conditions as well. Well, let's talk about the tests that you already carried out um, over the weekend then, Pablo. Uh, what did you do? Well, most of the testings were uh, um, associated with mobility to try to understand uh, how the how the, the the suit moves in a in a, in a real uh, field testing. So our test subject uh, was uh, doing different tasks as you will do on the on, on Mars. Can you like, give me uh, some examples? Yes, for example, um, taking samples or, or, or um, doing, um, for, for example, carrying a, a small cart and uh, taking samples of the Mars uh, um, terrain, some rocks, and, and cleaning some of them, climbing uh, some um, smaller slopes and, and areas that uh, will be difficult even without a suit. And uh, the, the suit really performed well. Um, and I think it was a, a, a very nice beginning for this, uh, for this kind of, of development here. So. And where have you made the most advances, do you think, then, Pablo? Where is, where is your spacesuit different from the ones that NASA already has? Well, uh, this is a, there was no, no other planetary suit since the Project Apollo in the end of the 60s. So this is, uh, NASA developed two prototypes for a planetary uh, spacesuits, but this is the first planetary suit outside NASA. And what we try to do is to create a very lightweight and very, a highly mobile uh, uh, demonstrator that can be used to improve future uh, planetary spacesuits. So where do you think you're failing at the moment then, Pablo? After the tests you've conducted, what do you need to focus on? Well, uh, we will continue in the area, for example, of mobility of the gloves. Uh, the hand movement uh, uh, is uh, be very difficult on a pressurized suit, so that's one of the areas that we'll have to concentrate. Also, the providing a life support system 
uh, uh, contain uh, what is called a portable life support system, which is actually a backpack, and to try to have some uh, um, some uh, equipment to provide the pressure and, and, and uh, temperature di differential for the suit, as well as radio and all the other equipment that is required. Well, Pablo, it's been great to talk to you. Thanks very much, and good luck uh, with as your project continues. Let's hope one day it is used on Mars. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pablo de Leon coordinated the North Dakota Experimental Planetary Spacesuit Project and he joined me today from Grand Forks in North Dakota.